Greetings and salutations, everyone. It's Wednesday at 2.45 uh, in the afternoon. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get the homily up from last weekend, so I thought I would. Uh, today is midweek, hump day, and um, maybe good to be reminded of what we were reflecting on uh, at Sunday Mass. Um, so here's what I shared with the folks this last weekend. When I was associate pastor at the Basilica in Dyersville, the parish there has a sister parish relationship uh, with a parish in Haiti. And while I was associate there, that horrible earthquake uh, happened in Port-au-Prince, which pretty much destroyed the city. And I went there with a parish group about six months after the earthquake. And we went down there, and it was a wonderful experience to see Haiti and to get to know the folks there who belong to the parish. They're about 45 minutes southeast of Port-au-Prince, and it took us about four hours to get there. That's the way their roads are in Haiti. Anyway, we got there, we spent time with them, and they showed us where they have their market. And the market is where you can buy shoes, where you can buy food, where you can get your meat. That was a very interesting place. They slaughter the cows on site, and you saw nine and ten-year-old kids holding freshly slaughtered meat. It was still twitching. It was a little bit different than buying a pork chop at our grocery store. Then we were going through the, the market and we came to the dentist that they have. And um, it was quite an experience. There's a chair, like a dentist chair, like anything. But the dentist looked at us and he smiled. And as he smiled, his teeth was filled with 24 karat gold. His teeth were basically gold. So I think the extent of dentistry where they were was pulling out teeth. And he said, do you want to check me? You want me to check your teeth, father? And I said, I think I'll take a break from that. I mention that because it makes me be very thankful for the advancements of medicine in our society. Just uh, recently, I've heard of a couple of new treatments that I did not know were going on. One of them deals with cancer, that they can use the, the measles virus to inject into tumors and have them kill the actual cancerous tumors. Well, when I was first here, there was a parishioner who had some aneurysms behind her eye. And they went up uh, through her groin, through the veins, and all the way behind her eye, and they put a little microscopic piece of metal to shore up the weakness of the blood vessels. Stuff that I've never heard of. Unbelievable what medicine can do. But there's also a shadow to that gift, and that is when the medical community fails us, we feel the pain of that more acutely because most of the time it works out for people, it seems. And just recently, I've had an experience of a couple of people have been misdiagnosed and the pain that that comes from that. One example is a parishioner's friend was rushed to the hospital in Waterloo thinking that she was having a brain aneurysm. But after a while, they, she gets sent to another hospital, and the doctors say that something else is wrong with her, much less serious. Or my nephew, who's a 24-year-old young man in Madison. The last several months, he's been having these seizures that come out of nowhere. Never had a seizure till he was 24 and four months ago. And he went to the UW system in Madison, went to the Freighted system in Milwaukee, and none of them helped them. They said, we can't help you anymore. He's up in Mayo trying to figure it out with those doctors up there. And part of the pain and part of the struggle is that the doctors can't tell my nephew what's wrong with him. So when medicine fails us, we feel it even more acutely than others. I bring that up because this last weekend with the gospel, Jesus is the great physician who's trying to properly diagnose our spiritual ills. And many times when we try to diagnose ourselves, we always make a mistake. Oh, I think the main reason why I am unhappy is because of this, this, and this. And in today's gospel, to show how Jesus brings to fulfillment what God had always intended as he re revealed his word. 
So the first reading from Deuteronomy speaks about the law. And the law is so that we can exercise our freedom properly. The law allows us to be in right relationship with God, but the law was not to be the end. It wasn't to be the checkoff list of my righteousness, that if I just follow these rules, I actually almost don't even need faith. And that was never the point of God giving us the law. The first reason why God gave us the law, especially the Ten Commandments, was so that we could be freed from slavery, a spiritual slavery, a slavery to ourselves, and the slavery that sin puts us in relationship with others. But then there was the prophets. And through the ministry of the prophets, they've always been reminding us the heart of the matter, why God wanted us to be faithful to him. And that is so that we could receive a heart like his. The prophet Ezekiel speaks about this. I will take your stony hearts and, giving, and give you natural hearts. I will place my spirit within you. I will write my law on your heart, not on stone. You see? And that's what happened with the Pharisees. They missed the main point of the Bible. It wasn't only about ritual purity. Ultimately, the rituals, the sacraments of the Old Covenant were to point to a new covenant with God, an agreement, a relationship with God in which God makes us temples of his spirit, that he dwells in us in a new and profound way. And that came with the ministry of Jesus, him saving us from sin and death and sending the Holy Spirit to us. So that's what Jesus is getting at. It's not about whether you eat pork or not. It's not about whether you eat this kosher diet that will make you ultimately pure, spiritually pure. It's whether you allow God to transform your heart. And that's how Jesus fulfills the Jewish faith. And that's what he's trying to help the Pharisees to see. So when Jesus speaks about the evils in our heart, evil thoughts, unchastity, greed, jealousy, envy, blasphemy, folly, he's telling us that our hearts are hardened. They've been, they've been hardened by those very realities in our heart. And what Jesus is trying to get at is, I need to do heart surgery on you. I need to crack you open. And I need to replace your heart. And I need to put Jesus' heart in you. That's what God the Father is saying. And as we look at the heart of Jesus, it is a heart that is broken open so that God's life can be lived through it. It can flow through the heart of Jesus. So the question for today, last Sunday and today and every day, is are you willing to consent to surgery by the divine physician, Jesus Christ? Don't you ever notice that? Whenever you're about to have a procedure, whenever you're about to have a surgery, whether you go into a hospital, what are the things you always have to sign? Consent forms. Consent form for this, consent form for billing, consent form, consent form, consent form. And they have to tell you why you have to consent. You have to knowingly say, yes, I want this in my life. That's a great spiritual analogy, how God the Father is a gentleman. Jesus is a gentleman. He doesn't force anyone like we saw last weekend. He even allows people to walk away from him. He is a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentle advocate, not harsh. He's not like vinegar. He is as pure and soft as olive oil. That's why we use olive oil many times to symbolize the Holy Spirit. So the question is, are you going to give consent to God opening up and tapping your heart, to tap it open so that his life can seep in to our lives and transform us. You can go to Mass every week for your whole life and never be changed because we don't allow God to come into our hearts in a new way. We're so set in our thought patterns, our habits, the way things are, that many times we do not allow the gospel actually to transform us. And we have to consent to it. The moment that people start consenting 
to God working in their lives in a powerful way, that's the moment when they start to change and change for the better. That's when marks of holiness start emerging in people's lives. Does that mean that your cure of hard-heartedness of different parts of the faith? No, that means why you constantly need to come back to the Lord so he can massage your heart and form it and mold it so that it can beat with the heart of Jesus. It's one of my favorite images that Dr. Wendy Wright, great scholar on St. Francis de Sales, speaks about to explain Francis' spirituality. It's about making our heart beat with God's heart. We have irrhythmic heartbeats. That's why we don't feel good. That's why we don't feel good about our lives. That's why our consciences bother us because our heart is not in sync with the one heart that leads to peace and holiness and ultimately freedom from the devil, from the flesh, and from the spirit of this world. So I offer that to you. Are you willing to consent to God changing your heart? And I pray that you sign the consent form. And may God bless you.